Hi there, you're watching the Gardens and Graveyards channel. My name is Charisma and today we're hanging out in the library slash studio. And I thought it would be really fun to share with you how I organize and get ready for the new year. It is the last week of December and we're getting ready to head into 2023. Although this is kind of what I do every single year. So it is um, perennial. So the first thing I always do is I have a day planner that I absolutely love and I will share with you the link absolutely. below. I love them. This is my fourth year of having this particular planner and um, I always buy it in November or even October sometimes if they have a good sale. I'll just pick it up then because I know I'm going to want to use this planner and then I have it for getting ready for the next year. I don't have to wait until after the year to begin. It's like I have it all set up and then I know what I'm walking into in the following year. Tell me in the comments below if you're one of the people who really love a new year, you have a fresh start and you just begin again with new goals and new everything, or are you, do you just like, that's hogwash and it's just another, it's just another day, another month, another week, whatever. Or I, I kind of stand in the in-between where I love the fresh, vibrant energy of dreaming. I'm a big dreamer and I love being in that space of dreaming in the wintertime and planning um, for the future. And I also, and I love organizing and planning. So obviously this time of year when we're all like that's the energy of cleaning out the closets and organizing the day book that's all like that's that's me that's i love doing that stuff but i also feel like i really take the i really like to take this time and look at my past calendar and i read my entire i, I journal every day i read my whole journal in the month of december and really take in like, oh, this is what happened this last year. And then I can, and then I also go through my last year's day book and see like, what was my schedule like and what could I tweak and change? And then I take all that information in, in this last week of December between the Christmas holiday and the new year holiday. I like to take that time to really like, really focus on like, how am I gonna build from the previous year. What can I do better? What can I do more of? What can I let go of? And how do I really want this year to look? And then I put it all in my day planner and hope for the rest. <laughs> so I wanted to share with you, this day planner is from the Dragon Tree Apothecary. And um, they are an amazing company. They have a spa in Portland. They have a spa, I think it's a spa or retreat center in Colorado and they make all these beautiful products and Brianna Borton and her husband Peter run the company and Brianna does all these beautiful meditations that are available online that you can find. Um, of course, her online community is fantastic. If you're, if you're interested in anything like that, I will link her um, social media below and then I will link the Dragon Tree Apothecary with, this, with the link for this book in the descriptions. So you can check those things out if you like. This is their dream book and planner for 2023. This one is um, dated. You can buy planners that are not dated. You can buy planners. My last year's planner was this one and I bought a cover for it. So it has this cover and the cover has a ribbon bookmark in it. So that's convenient. Their planners do not have ribbon bookmarks, which I'm going to show you how to put in a ribbon bookmark in the spiral planner in just a minute. But this one was the, um, not, not the spiral binding. It's just got the regular binding. I'm going to just take this out of here. It's got, you know, this kind of a binding on it. Um, so they have both those kinds, this, this kind of a spine and this kind of a spine. So that's an option, you know, you can look at which one you like better. And then Essentially, they're basically the same book. Um, they have this beautiful embossing. Last year I did white. It's kind of hard to tell what the embossing is. I think they have a red, a black, and maybe a purple one. 
I'm not sure. And then same with this. This has the embossing on it. Really just, it's just subtle and sweet. And you can, I mean, I, this year I'm going to leave it like this. I'm not going to put a cover on it. But the previous year, uh, so two years ago, three years now, it'll be three years ago now. Um, this was my um, cover. And this one did have a spiral um, and this one is the purple color, so I could show you that color too. I, I'd like to change things up. Okay, so this was the cover, and then it had the spiral, and then I bought the, the cover, and um, I just love the moon symbols, so, and then I thought I was going to love the purple, but it was, um, you know, I like the moons better that year, okay, but the, um, the cover has the ribbon for a bookmark, whereas again, the, the day planner does not have the ribbon. So anyway, um, the only thing about the journal or the journal, the day planner that I wish it had a, just a few extra little touches that I find necessary in my life. And and past years, I've just kept, you know, I have a notebook for all of my content creation for YouTube and social media. I have a, a journal thing for my finances. And I find I have like this huge stack of <laughs> three ring binders. I have a YouTube binder here, just like all the binders. And ev eventually through the year, I'll just get sick of seeing a big stack of, you know, binders and things to do, things that are pulling my attention. And I'll put almost all of them away except for the day book. And then I tend to ignore them and not be as good or committed to the different things that I want to be committed to. So this year, I've decided to add some pages into my day planner that incorporate all those things. So I've added, I'm adding a monthly content creation um, calendar. I'm adding a quarterly finance spreadsheet and I'm adding my affiliate program the goal for 2023 to grow the YouTube channel and create um, more, um, more community and more money. Right now I'm not making any money on this channel, so please share, please subscribe, please, you know, like and ring the bell and keep letting YouTube know that you love this channel. YouTube alone is not an, a huge income producer, but it is a way for me to have a creative outlook, for me to share with my community, and for all of us to learn together. And in, do, in so doing, I hope that one day I will just make a living doing this and I won't have to go to my day job or I can do that too. Who knows? I'm multifaceted. And that's also why I love this day planner is because I'm a multifaceted multi person. I have a lot of fascinations. So there's the gardens and there's the graveyards and there's the organization and there's crafting and canning and family and friends and my spiritual practices. I can actually put all of that in this planner. So I'm gonna just go real quick through the planner so you have an idea of why this planner is different than just any calendar that you might pick up from a big box store. So to begin with, I'm going to just read a little excerpt from the founders. And what it says is, ritual makes a difference. Many of us want to feel a greater sense of meaning and purpose in our lives, but aren't sure where that would come from. The secret, the secret is that we are in charge of creating meaning and purpose. Ritual brings order, specialness, context, focus to our lives. The opening and closing or the initiation and conclusion of a ritual aligns our intention with our actions and it sets the stage for the action to be as effective as possible. Ritual grounds us in the present 
It rescues us from dwelling on the past and worry from the future. And I just, that embodies this planner to me because not only is it a space for me to write down the things that I need to be doing, but they also really help us ritualize our, the mundane, ritualize the everyday, make sure that every day is so special and we get to celebrate our lives. So the first section is called Connect. And this is before the big, this is before the book really even begins. And under the Connect section, there's multiple sections that um, you're encouraged to fill out and really dream about the following year. And so the first section on Connect, it has questions like, what are you longing for most in life? What feels really nourishing in your life? What do you want to explore more deeply? And then the next, and then uh, the next section talks about your values and gifts and helps you really focus on that and figure out, you know, if you know your purpose in life and you always look at your purpose as a lens, then you'll always find meaning and you'll always have, you'll always have a guidepost in the sky. Like, you know, the stars are um, how our ancestors created maps and like, that's how you knew where to go on, you know, the big clan meetings is you would follow the stars and you would follow the sun and the moon to know what time of year it was. And that is how you got to get together with big groups of people rather than just your little village or your, you know, your individual clans. And I believe that the stars are still a map, but we've forgotten how to read them. And so I think that our purpose, our, our, star seed inside of us has a real way of showing us and lighting up our path so that we when we feel a little off track we could go back to our purpose and say oh does this align with my purpose is this what i really want to be doing with my life and if it's not and if it's skewed is there any way that we can tweak it and adjust it so that we could get back in alignment with what our purpose is so this um, little section gives us a, just a few little hints on what our on how to find our purpose, and it um, kind of helps you like what's your purpose for this year if it's not like the big picture. What's your purpose for life? So you could use it either way or both. Um, and then the next area there's a space for visualizing and dreaming, and then there's um, this dream section. Um, and they go into relationships and family, community connection, describe your community, how are you nourished and supported by your community, physical wellness, describe your beautiful body, how do you sleep, how's your energy, how do you feel about aging? That's a big question for me as I'm um, approaching my middle years, as I'm really um, Deepening in on how I feel about becoming a middle-aged woman and what that really means to me and how I want it, how I want it to mean to me because I could just go along and say whatever society says, but I could really feel into it and say, you know what? I know some really beautiful elders that not only are beautiful on the outside and beautiful on the inside and they create beauty all around them. Like I want to embody that elder. I want to be, I want all encompassing beauty and I don't want to be bitter, bitter and um, sad that my youth is behind me because the future holds so much potential. The next section is creation, exploration, and play. Um, what fascinates you? Do you have a space for just doing your own creative thing? What does that look like? Um, psychology and spiritual health. How is your self-esteem? How do you feel about dying? That is a, such a pertinent question to ask yourself and your loved ones because if we don't know how we feel about the big things in life like dying, then it scares us. It, it can be really scary. And so I think looking at death from all, perce all perceptions is so important for our, our spiritual growth, our mental wellness, and even like it calms our anxieties. If we know what we hope to expect, um, then we're not fearful and anxious about what might happen. 
And then there's areas where you can daydream about, daydream or plan um, about your one year goal. And basically um, the suggestion is you do like the brainstorming kind of deal. So there's the one year, three years, 10 years and lifetime um, pages that you can just kind of dream about and make goals. And what are, um, what are goals? They're dreams with steps of actualization, right? They're, um, they're a visualization with actual goals make your dreams come true. All right, so then the next section that I wanna point out is that there is a um, quarterly breakdown of projects. You can put down all of the projects and what quarter you want to put that project in um, through the year. And then the next section is um, breaking it down by month and um, per project. So like it says February project, and then the things that you need to do for your projects. So, so it has each month of the, of the quarter laid out here. And what I've done because I wanted to add a financial spreadsheet is I took my um, Google Docs spreadsheet that I have my fin finances on, which I don't tend to look at. I don't love it. I love the formula of it, but I don't love going into my computer and doing work on it. So I actually printed blank ones out for the quarter and um, and then I added it into the book. So this shiny silver piece is my page that I've added into this book. And all it has is, it's, so on one side I have my personal finances, on the other side I have my business finances. Um, it's pretty simple, but it's easy to keep track of and I just love that I was able to just add it in and I'm gonna show you how I can add pages into the book. The other thing that I added is you can see these little tabs here and they are January, January through December tabs. Um, and I've just put them at the, you know, where they're, they have the January calendar. I put a little January tab. So I bought these tabs on Amazon and I'll link those down below. And then, um, I also put, I have these little blue markers in here just to remind me these blue markers to remind me of what um, I want to talk to you about. So, but I also put some tabs on the top. You can see the black tabs in there. Um, these tabs here, these are the quarterly tabs. So I can just quickly pop over to the quarterly section so I can look at my project projections. I can look at my finance pr projections um, real quick and easy that way. So I don't have to have a whole bunch of extra pages in there. So the, the next thing that I added in um, right after my calendar, this is like the everyday calendar, the things that I'm going to be doing. Um, some of it does include like what if I'm leaving town or going somewhere for um, YouTube content con creation that goes on this calendar, but so do doctor's appointments and you know, dates with my husband and hanging out with my friends and family time and you know, holidays and birthdays and all that kind of stuff. Um, I do like to use stickers and I'll show you my sticker collection in just a minute, but I've put little four leaf clovers on our paydays and I've put little green hearts on our date nights and I've got a big green heart on our anniversary and that kind of thing. Um, it's just sort of like my little system. So then um, af after the monthly calendar here, I have added in another calendar. This is a month long calendar. I've added this in and it's sideways because I, because I'm in a spiral, I can just open it like this and work on it this way. Um, and I've added this in because this is my monthly content calendar. This is how I plan the content for YouTube. Um, what videos that I want to film on what day and what kind of videos that I want to, um, well, the filming, the editing, and the scheduling days, and what days they're gonna get posted, all of that goes on this content creation calendar. And that way I could just look at a glance, um, you know, if I need to go refer to this um, once a week and go, oh, okay, this is what I'm planning on doing this week. And then I could put it in my weekly calendar, um, which is the next page over. And we've got 
the week calendar. So this planner actually starts this week, which I love that about her because, um, or I love that about this day planner because, um, you know, the last week or two of the month, you're always like, oh, I'm, I'm working on this day planner, but I have to refer to this calendar so that I know what I'm doing today. And I love that this um, calendar actually started with the last week of December. So I could just start using this calendar right away. Um, so then what they have here is they have sort of a dividing mark in the middle of the page, if you could see that, um, with just some inspirational quotes. And some people will do like, morning and then afternoon but what i've discovered that i really like and that works for me is i do my um everyday stuff go to work doctor's appointment vet appointment um what i'm gonna do in the garden all that kind of stuff and then down below i talk about what i'm doing for my business whether it's um you know content creation or filming or um you know Instagram posts or whatever it is, I put that on this part. And then down here, um, there's a little box for I am grateful for. And I take a minute at the beginning of every day and put what my intention is on top. There's a spot for that, for your, for your intention, and then for what you're grateful for. But if I have a birthday that week, I always put their birthday down here. So my niece and my granddaughter both have birthdays this week. So I put, I'm grateful for my niece's birthday and I put her name and how old she is and my granddaughter's birthday and her name and how old she is. Just so that that's like a little reminder for me. Um, in accordance with the payday stickers and the date night stickers that I showed you a second ago, I put that in my weekly calendar as well. So my date night sticker has a green heart and my payday sticker is down here on the bottom just so I can um, quickly look at the, um, you know, the weekly calendar and I have to keep referring back to the monthly calendar. The other thing that this calendar has that's really great is they do have the moon cycle, which I'm going to be focusing a lot more on moon gardening this next year, which will be fun new content for you to um, tune into. But um, this calendar does have some, I think they have, well, I know they have new moon and full moon, but I think they have quarter moons as well. Um, but I bought some moon stickers so that I could also do, basically there's like six moons to pay attention to, the waxing and the waning um, moons and the first quarter moon, so, so it's basically, it's all this, it's all these moons. It's a uh, new moon, waxing moon, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waxing gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent. And so it has all of those, the stickers have all of those um, on them. And then that way I can quickly look at this same book. I don't have to go refer to a moon app or another, you know, space to see oh, what is the moon going what's the moon doing right now um because moon gardening has a lot to do with gardening according to the moon obviously um as well as some other fun stuff so yeah that's kind of it as far as what i wanted to go over with you here um i know that seems like a whole lot uh for a day planner but i'm telling you it is just amazing to have all of all of these aspects of your life all in one space so you could just really look at it quickly and it's all right there and there's no you're not missing anything um the other thing that i do this week is i always go through my old calendar and transfer everything to my new calendar so birthdays anniversaries special dates um and then i also go through each month and see, okay, so like, because I do tours and because I really love going, um, I go and see, okay, when is the Daffodil Festival this year? What weekends are there open houses? Um, when is the, you know, the Tulip Festival? When's the Dahlia Festival? When when are the sunflower fields open? Um, and I, and, or if there's um, shows that I want to go to, landscape shows or um, wedding shows or anything like that, I, do some internet research and I put those weekends in my calendar and if they don't have weekends yet if it's all to be determined I just put them in the notes section down below which I love that there's that option let's see open this up in the notes section down below on the monthly calendar I can 
put, you know, an event that I'm looking for for that month. And then when that month rolls around, I can look it up and like, I won't forget about it. And it won't be like, oh, I meant to do that this year. And I forgot about it. Um, I'll already know when I open up, oh, I need to see if that's happening this month. And, um, or it'll be closer to the date. So they'll have dates for me. Um, so that's the other thing that I do is I put all my dates in there. Ah, okay, so now I want to show you how I customize this and personalize it so that it works even better for me. And I hope that it gives you some inspiration on how you can add to your own day planner. Even if you don't have this day planner, um, these little tips and tricks will absolutely work for you. So let's get over to the project area and I will show you how to do those things. All right, let's get started on customizing our planner. So the first thing I want to talk about is stickers because that's just like a super easy given that most people associate with their planners. So this is the moon. These are the moon stickers that I was talking about that I will be adding at appropriate intervals. It's going to take me a little bit of time to look at a moon calendar and transfer all of the all of the appropriate stickers onto the appropriate days, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight moon phases in a month. And so I will be putting those um, not on the monthly calendar because I won't tend to look at that as often. So I'll be putting them on the weekly calendar so I could really like see them right away. Then the other um, kind of stickers that I like to have is just like a stack of like these are St. Patrick's Day stickers, but I always have like, you know, Christmas stickers and um, Easter stickers and all of that kind of stuff just to give my um, a, a quick look at, oh, that's a holiday that's coming up and it's not just like more of my handwriting. The other thing that I picked up was this gold foil sticker, these gold foil sticker sheets from your Zycoto and I love these stickers. I'm so glad that I got them. They've got this beautiful little envelope. They came with this really sweet thank you card, which I thought was a really nice touch um, on the company's part. And then they have these beautiful stickers that are all gold foil, which I really, I really love. And since my calendars already say January through December, I'm actually going to use these um, stickers for my monthly content calendar. So basically, I'm just going to go in here. With, oh, I just opened up to a random. So here's April's monthly content. It's blank and I could just stick the sticker right there. I just go through and find the April sticker, peel it off of there, stick it on my calendar and now it has that special beautiful touch which is so fun to me. So um, definitely find some stickers that are super fun for you that you can utilize. But the other thing that I do is I get these great stickers and then I put them in a drawer somewhere and they don't get used. So I want to create a pocket so I can put these stickers in and I will show you how to do that in just a minute. But first let's go ahead and add in these calendars. Okay. So anyway, so I've printed these out and they were going in a three ring binder, but I don't want to use the three ring binder. So I need to cut them down to size. So what I did is I tore out a sheet of blank paper that was in the back of the day book. And I will show you how to cut it down to size and make tabs this way. And then I will show you how to do it another way in case you don't have extra papers that you want to remove from your book. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to move these things out of the way so you can see. I'm going to size the paper so that it fits, um, size it up. So it, fit, it fits over the whole calendar, but this is the excess that I don't want. And then I'm going to mark, I'm gonna mark where that is and then cut off the excess. All right, 
right, so now I have those marked and I'm gonna cut the excess off. Obviously, if you had a nice paper cutter, you could just use that. I just make sure that this is lined up the way I want it. Line up, matches. So then the next thing you're gonna do is you notice the tabs that are right here. I'm just gonna mark in the middle of each one of these tabs. My pen, right, I want them to attach into the book. We're going to go through this a couple of times together. Um, up close and then we'll speed it up. So you'll be able to see the whole process a few times. Um, sometimes I think repetition helps. So I'm going to remove my blank paper and I'm going to grab my hole punch. Now they have different kind of hole punches. They have ones that actually make these tabs and you can pick up, but I'm only going to use it a few times. I don't think I need to invest in something like that. And this works just fine. I already have one of these. So I'm going to hole punch where every one of those little dots are. So just going to go and it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, in my opinion, you could measure every single one and get really super precise if that's something that's important to you. But I don't want to get hung up on stuff like that. I just want to get the project done. I want it to be functional and I just want to, I want to begin using it immediately. <laughs> all right. So then the next thing I'm going to do, I've got all of my holes punched and then I'm going to take scissors. And I'm going to cut right in the middle of each one of these holes. And I'm going to actually make two tiny, tiny sliver cuts. Um, and I want them to sort of be at an angle like this. Because I want the tabs to be close where the spine, um, the spiral binders are. I want the tab to be fairly close and catch. But I want it to be loose enough in this section that it freely turns the pages and doesn't get caught up. If you just slip one snip in between each one, um, they tend to hold on a little too tight and you can't freely move the pages. Um, and you might be able to get away with that if it's a single ring spiral. I'll pop a picture of a single ring spiral up on the screen because I don't have one right here with me. But, um, you know, this one has the double, so there's like, there's two right here and some of them just have one. Um, so you might be able to get away with just one sliver if it was, if it was just one. I want to create plenty of movement. I don't want any kind of frustration when I'm trying to utilize my book. All right, so now I've got that done and I'm going to put it in here. Okay, I have one already done. So I have this one here and all we're gonna do is pop them in to the spiral, just like this. Sometimes it's helpful to use like a, a pencil or an eraser. Um, Okay, 
So then it just goes in there nice and easy like that. And let's see what month are we on? August? May as well put the sticker on while we're here. August. Okay, then we have September. Basically what I'm doing is I have this September month, right? And then I turn the page and it goes straight into my first week of September, um, visualization and goal making. And so my first Sunday of every month or last Sunday, let's see, that's typically the first Sunday of every month, I plan out my content for the month typically. So um, that sheet works perfectly right here where I have all my goal setting and where I normally visualize. I just pop in this little calendar and that way I have, I have that in a space where I can readily access it and it's right behind the month tab so I can easily find it. And this is the most likely place that I'd be utilizing it because I would sit down on a Sunday and plan out my week anyway. So there's my sun, my monthly Sunday. And so then this is September. Put the September sticker right there. And that's how we add a calendar or any kind of page that you want into your binder. So we can continue doing that.
Okay, so then the next piece that we want to add in is our monthly finances. This sparkly page just, just gives me a little bling that sparks my joy. Finances and math are not my favorite thing to do. So anything I could do to make it like more enjoyable, I do. So I put this on shiny sparkly silver page. Um, and pencil shows up really well on this. So that's perfect because again math and i just wanted to show you how i do it basically the exact same way i just take my template and lay it over there mark it and punch out the holes the other way that you can do it is again you're gonna you can measure with actual measuring tape measure your um page for your for your planner mark it out cut it down and then i will show you what we would do after that so I didn't want to tear out a page of my binder and I've measured it, like physically measured it and cut my page to size. The other thing I could do is just lay this page that I want to add into my binder and lay it right underneath the spiral and take my pen, go in just a little bit so that there's enough room for a tab and just mark at every little spiral junction here. <laughs> like so. And then you would just do the exact same thing. Hole punch and cut your little slivers and so then I want to just pop it in right here I'm just gonna go through and this one these ones are a little bit thicker so they're harder to get in with my fingers So there you have it and I've added my pages. Next thing we're going to do is add a ribbon. Um, I basically cut it twice the length, maybe a little bit longer. They can be cut down um, than the actual planner. You're going to open the planner all the way up and then wear the pull this over so you could see it really clear and I'm just going to you could use smaller ribbon you could use twine you could use thread but that's like really hard to see um, if you did use something smaller than this kind of a ribbon you could use a needle that would help um, wind it a little easier basically you're just gonna go and You're going to slip them in like this. And I want to bring this all the way through. And I'm going to tie a knot right here. The end. And uh, depending on how that looks at the end, I may cut off the tail and that's fine. Um, I'm basically just putting a nice good knot right there so I can begin. So I'm just gonna slip this ribbon right in here. That's the easiest way to do this to show you. Okay. 
come through here and it's basically like you're tying a shoelace you're gonna just zigzag back and forth One benefit to doing this is not only do you get a bookmark, you also get to secure your spiral book because especially when you add pages, you're definitely adding the potential to for these pages to come off of the spiral. Um, but also just like a lot of use on a book like this, um, which our planners tend to get a lot of use, right? Um, a lot of use will also just sometimes create a loose, loose page or two on a spiral binder. This would stop that in a quick hurry. Right. As I get deeper into the spiral, it's getting harder. So I'm gonna go grab a safety pin and I think that's gonna help me out a whole lot. So hold on. All right, I found a safety pin. So let's get into this. Get to, hopefully, and I'm just gonna thread it up at an angle through both of these spaces. Get in the rhythm here. Don't want it to be really twisted, but I do wanna see the pretty pattern. And then just like a shoelace, we're gonna cross back over into this one. And then I'm gonna angle the pin up into this one. So one, if you had a bigger safety pin than this, this wouldn't be a problem. For some reason, I cannot find any safety pins in my house. It took forever to find that one. So jewelry making kit and grab these little guys. I feel like I'll be able to grab onto it a lot faster and easier than otherwise. And if you had a nice stiff ribbon, this wouldn't be a problem at all. You wouldn't need a safety pin or anything. The last one, I'm gonna loop it up through here. And just create a little knot right here. And now I have a nice bookmark. And basically, we'll pull this up close to where the paper is again. Flip it like this. 
And now I can use this ribbon to mark my planner. And it just hangs out like that. You can cut it a little bit shorter. I think I'll cut mine a little bit shorter. Um, I need it to be sticking out that much. And then you want to take a little lighter and just barely hover over the edge just to seal that in and you don't get a bunch of fringe. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this tail where we made our beginning. And tail right here. And just take that over the edge. It just sort of melts the threads on the edge so it doesn't um, unravel. And that's perfect. So from this side, it's just black. It blends in with the planner. But from this side, I have a little pop of green, which is awesome. All right, so then the last thing I wanna do, or the next thing I wanna do, is I want to add a way to hold this together. Because as you can see, it's getting very thick with the extra um, pages in them and I don't want it to sit up like that. So I'm going to add some elastic. You can use any kind of elastic you want. I had some white elastic here and I thought I might be able to cover it with the ribbon. My ribbon's just slightly smaller than the elastic and I really don't want the white. So I picked up, I was going to just pick up some black, but I found this sparkly one and how can I resist? It's exactly what I need. So what we're going to do is we're going to hot glue it into the back. So this is, this is the front. This is the back. This is just the very back um, cover. So we're just going to hot glue it in there. I'm just gonna lay a line. Oh. All right, so then I'm gonna take my band and I want it to just basically be the same length plus a little bit so I can turn it under and glue it in. So take that off of there. This is the same length. And we're gonna put a little square of glue right here on the bottom. I'm gonna turn this under so that it's all the way to the edge. Like so pulling a little bit right there so I can just hot glue that. And now I have a band that will just oops, hold this closed just like that. Next thing I want to do is I want to add the ability to have some post-it notes in my day planner. So I'm just going to glue this right here 
and then we'll make a pocket and we'll be done. So again, it's really easy. We're just gonna make sure you have it on the right one. I'm just gonna glue this the whole back piece. Onto here. And that's that. And now I have a sticky note thing, right? Easy access for me. The last thing I'm gonna do is make a pocket. Again, this is the back cover. These are the last two pages of the book. And they are blank in this one, which is perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this page. I'm going to fold it down so it's a triangle here. Let's do it this way. I'm gonna fold it down so it's a triangle just like this. Up against the binding. Just like that. And then lay it down and it creates a pocket. I'll glue here and here. You could also use washi tape or something like that if you wanted. So I'm just gonna take my glue, put it right along the edge. I wanna go too close to the edge cause I want a big pocket. So you can see with the green glitter glue where the glue is. And then we just lay it straight down on there. And just like that, I've got a pocket. And it's not holding. This glue is not working for me tonight. The other thing you could do is get a little piece of tape or washi tape or anything like that. I might just have regular tape. All right, so I went ahead and just grabbed some clear tape and we'll just put it right here along the bottom. and pull it up, fold it over here, just to create that little pocket. But it's always so nice to just have a pocket in case you wanna put something in there. Maybe I will put my stickers in there. Maybe not all of them, that's a lot of stickers. But I can put a few stickers in there or you could put some like receipts or something in there, but I could certainly put, you know, something like that in there so that I have it right here with me. Or if I know I'm going somewhere specific and I need to have some, a small loose paper, um, I can take that. Um, and that would be a great place to stash my little notes. Uh, so anyway, so that's it. So I've got my beautiful day planner from Dragon Tree Apothecary. I, shared with you all of its wonderful qualities and how I added just a couple extra touches such as my budget planner, my content planner, and how I added ta quarter tabs, even though there are already quarter sheets in here, I put tabs on the top so I can clearly find them. I put tabs on the side so I could find all my months I added a pocket and a note, a notepad and a thing to hold my book together. I also added a bookmark. Uh oh, did I make it too small? Cause I lost it. No, I added a bookmark and 
there's one last thing that I want to add and that is a pen holder. So again, we're going to go to the very back page or the back of the cover. We're going to grab one of these things. What are they? They're like a paper clip. You, you know what I'm talking about? These things that they open up like this and they come in big sizes and small sizes and all kinds of colors, but I wanted it to just sort of be incognito here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of my elastic and I'm going to glue it so that there's a little bit of a loop big enough for my pen. So I'm going to put my pen right here and I want the elastic to be a little bit tight. So I'll hold it a little bit close and it'll hold it just like this. So what we're going to do is glue one side on gonna put a bunch of glue on here and we're gonna put the elastic there then I want to put my pen on top of I'm trying to show you so you can have a clear idea so I've got my paper clip I'm going to set my pen right here and then I'm going to put this over the pen and I'm going to hold it a little bit tight so that my pen is nice and secure. I can't pull it out super easy. It's not falling out and then I'm going to cut my elastic right there. Make sure it doesn't fray. Okay. And then I'm going to put glue on this side. And then I'm going to just line the edge of my elastic to the edge of the paper clip. So you can see, hopefully you could see that there's a little bit of a gap. There's a little bit of a loop right there. So when it dries, I could stick my pen in there. Now I'm going to open this up. I'm going to clip it right here. So I want to see where my pen lands. So I don't want it to want my pen to just be slightly in from the edge of the top of my planner. So that's pretty perfect. Just going to leave it right there. Of course, clamp it down. Better? No, I guess. All right. So I'm going to leave that there and then I can slide my pen right in here, just like that. So now I have, a way to hold my book together, a pen holder, some extra paper, some glue strings. <laughs> I've got my ribbon, uh, bookmark, my pocket. Can hold my book together just like this. And that is it. I'm all put together. I'm so happy. I'm ready for the new year. I will make sure that this gets linked below and I hope you enjoyed um, hanging out with me while I got my organizer planned and or my organizer, my, my organizer, my planner organized today. And um, we're going to be doing a lot more organizations. It's the beginning of the year and it's just that's that time you know that's the energy of this time of year so just different things just to prepare for the spring because 
it's going to be here before we know it. But until then, and until the next video, keep celebrating your life and we will see you soon. Happy New Year's.